Good morning. There's no use trying, Alice said to the queen. You can't believe in possible things. You just need to practice, answered the queen. When I was younger, I used to do it at least a half hour a day. In fact, often, I imagined and believed six impossible things before breakfast. How many impossible things did you believe this morning before coffee or tea? Lights up, shout them out. <laughs> ah, good. End of poverty. Great. <laughs> One or two more. Come on, there must be more impossible things. Remember, the queen got to six often. Oh, good. You know, this is a, you, you've had a lot of practice as this community and dreaming and believing in impossible things. In fact, all week you've been creating headlines of impossible things that you wanted to do. And so now I get to stand here with the privilege of saying, thank you for that. Thank you for believing in the impossible things and for taking your visions, your talent, your persistence, your passion, your purpose, and taking it forward to accelerate all of the possibilities to turn the impossible possible. It's also quite a, a privilege to stand here at this point and say thank you Thank you to the leadership team that brings this forum and shares it with all of us year after year. Their vision. <laughs> and thank you to all of the speakers, the entrepreneurs, the guests who have been on this stage before me. This is my 14th forum, whether it's your first, are your fourth, are your fourteenth? I hope that you are already believing deeply in what Bright Simone identified in his acceptance speech when he said, "It is the trust and the solidarity of this community that moves us forward." Feeling that, believing that. This is a community that also understands the power and the importance of change. No matter where we live or what we do in the world, overnight, something has changed. There's been a seismic shift, an algorithmic disruption that can make the impossible seem more impossible. Or, in the hands of entrepreneurs, it can make the possible feel within our reach. And what we have heard together is how you are taking the impossible and every day moving it forward. The shifts, the changes that can be so daunting can lead others to fall into the rabbit holes of despair or to give up or to lose perspective. You have not. You have persevered. And that is why your stories that we share when we come together make us believe that while this isn't a perfect world, we can build a better world and share it together. There are so many sessions and so many narratives that emerge from this convening that it's tempting to want to share them all again to remind us of what we have learned and what we have heard. They're wildly divergent Yesterday, dropping in on a session called, What if AI doesn't like me? <laughs> Leading another called Journalist Under Fire and Hearing the Serious Threats. And then spending time discussing the question, the important question, can art and culture really create change? Well, we know it can, and it must. Out of all the stories, what I take away every year is that journalists bear witness and that entrepreneurs create and sustain the change. The change that does lead to the solutions 
to the world's most pressing problems. And if that sounds familiar, it should. It is the foundation of everything that Jeff Skoll has created. He believed when many didn't that stories well told, narratives compellingly put together could and would create change. And those are the stories that we hear and share every year. And another great leap of faith, he took it one step further and invited us all to participate in the problem solving. And through participant media, took the stories to other pathways, creating the notion and the belief that narratives well told on screen, no matter the size of the screen, could change our minds open our hearts, shape our opinions. Last night, we got to see one of Participant Media's films, The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind, a tremendously inspiring story. And later today, you'll hear from Chiwetel Ejiofor, the creator, the vision behind that story. But our access to the narratives that inform, inspire, enlighten, ignite our imaginations, are threatened. The sources to our trustworthy information, the kind of information we need to be informed parents, grandparents, makers, creators, they're diminishing, as is the consolidation of media ownership, consolidating the opinions and ideologies that continue to divide and diminish. But in that ecosystem, there is one voice that stands strong. One voice that continues to lead us and give us the kind of trustworthy information we need from the front lines of change. And she does it often at great personal risk. Her full bio is in your programs, and I urge you to read it. But let me just share three or four things that have happened to her in just the last week or so. She was named by Variety as a power woman. No surprise there. UK Vogue named her one of the most amazing and fabulous women over 50. <laughs> no surprise there. And one definitely worth noting. She was number 12 on a list of the world's 100 most reputable people. Up there with Dalai Lama, Michelle Obama, and Malala. Please welcome CNN's chief international anchor, Christiane Amanpour.